Okay, so we want to go and look at this stuff in GeoGebra and in Excel and see how this works out. Now, GeoGebra, unfortunately, if you try and uh, draw a vector field, it doesn't like that. It likes to see slope fields, which is dy dx instead of dy dx dt and dy dt. But we can do a little chain rule thing here. Um, if y is a function of x and a function of t, then the derivative of that is, oh, don't want to write it like that. The derivative with respect to t of y of x of t is y prime of x of t times x prime of t. That's our chain rule. And this is a y, and that's an x there. Or one of the benefits of the Leibniz notation is we can write it like this. y is a function of x, and x is a function of t. So what's the derivative of y of x of t? It's the derivative of y with respect to x right, times the derivative of the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function, which is the derivative of x with respect to t. So dy dt is dy dx times dx dt, or dy dx equals dy dt over dx dt. For this example, given what dy and dx are, we get dy dx is 3y plus xy minus 3y squared over 10x minus 5xy. And if you put that into GeoGebra as a slope field, it will give you the vector field that we're looking for. So um, let me see if I can figure out how to switch the share. We'll just stop that, and we'll go now look at GeoGebra. So this is GeoGebra, and Use the slope field command with dy dt divided by dx dt to get the uh, picture. And this is pretty much what we expect. We've got our three equilibria there, there, and there. There's three, two. You can see the spiral. You can see the saddle here at zero, one, and the source here at zero, zero. Um, we'd like to put in the null clines. And so those are the null clines for y. There's y is equal to zero on those. So we just have horizontal uh, slope marks there. And then there are the two purple lines, and those are the null clines for x. Um, so that gives us our um, null clines. You can see up here in the upper left corner, everything is going down and out, down and out, up flattens out a little bit that way. Everything is spiraling in the first quadrant, sort of going down and out in the second quadrant. So we can throw in some um, solution curves. The command for these kinds of solution curves that I put in is solve ODE. So you go solve ODE. And we want the command that's got a Y prime and an X prime. So that's our X and Y coordinates. And then you give it an initial condition and how long you want the um, NTs, just how many, how long you want T to go for, and a step size, like Euler's method. So Y prime is 3Y, oops, 3Y plus XY minus 3Y squared. X prime is 10X minus, minus 5XY. And suppose we want to start <clears throat> right near this point. Um, so we'll start at X equals 
1.1 and no an eighth is what but one two five so point oh one two five and y is say at uh, let's start at zero and then y at one Oh, backwards. One point oh one two five. Sorry about this. X equals point one. Do a step size of three. We'll end at three, and we'll do a step of point oh one. And that gives me my solution, and that's pretty close to being my. Um, the separatrice that we drew before, we can duplicate the input. That gives us the same starting. You can say that NT, you can run your time backwards and say NT is minus one. That runs back in there. And so we sort of have at least a close approximation to our separatrix curve that was um, going from this equilibrium out to that equilibrium. Now you can see that everything has to be bounded that, by that. We can throw in a bunch of other solutions, right? A solution that starts up here, just wraps into there. Solution that starts up here, comes down, it's going to the right a little bit until it gets to this purple line that shifts to going to the left. We want this one. There's one that starts near the origin, comes out. It's going down a little bit until it gets here and then it comes back up. And there's one that goes out to the right, and another one that goes out to the right. And we can zoom way out. You can see that these curves are actually getting close to the x-axis as we go out to the left, because they're going up here and down here, so they're actually converging on the x-axis. Everything here will come down to the x-axis. Everything coming out here comes out, goes up to the x-axis. Here we're going away from the x-axis and get a big loop some sort of loops in there. So that's the picture of our um, vector field and what the solution curves look like. Uh, you can do that on GeoGebra, which is nice. We can also stop that share. We can share Euler's method in two dimensions. Um, so it's the same kind of Euler's method we did before. So now we have our old X and our old Y. These are our initial conditions. <clears throat> a change in T, which I'm actually going to control over here. Slope for X. There's my X prime uh, formula. Slope for Y. That's the Y prime formula. What's delta X? It's change in T times the slope for X delta y, delta t times the slope for y. This is um, x prime of t, and this is the equation for y prime of t. And then the new x, you take the old x, you add it to the change in x, and they use the new x, old y, change y. So if we start at 1, 1, which is in the first quadrant, we should spiral into that um, equilibrium at 3, 2. If we take delta t equals to 1, though, these numbers become negative. We ended up down in the fourth quadrant. So both negative, we're actually down in the third quadrant, and then the numbers just go berserk. So our delta t was too big. We can reduce that, say, to this, and that looks a little bit better. If delta t is 0.1, we get a graph that looks like this. The blue is the x. And the, because we're starting at 1.5, 1.1. Yeah, the blue is the x-coordinate, and the red here is the y-coordinate. And if we're in the first quadrant, we should be cycling into 3, 2, right? And you see that x-coordinate goes up and down and settles down at 3. Y-coordinate oscillates a little bit and settles down at 3. Um, 
we can look at other points. You know, if we start at minus one, one. Well, our slope is still too big there because we got giant numbers. So we have to make delta t smaller. And minus one, one should go out to the left. Starting the second quadrant, we should approach the x axis at some point. Oh, and we're still too big. We'll go to zero, zero, one. And then we'll get a better graph. On the other hand, even though it's a better graph, right, we're only getting out to about minus 1.7 because the step size is too small. Right, we started out with a negative x that's in blue. Going to the left, we started out with a positive y, and that's decreasing. So as time goes on, this should approach zero eventually, and this should just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more negative. So you can play around with it and see what kind of um, points you can get. If we started near the equilibrium at uh, 0, 1, and change our delta t back to point zero, point 0.1, which seemed to work in the first quadrant. Same thing, right? There's our first quadrant. So uh, this is a useful program for playing with um, two-dimensional vector fields. Uh, this is a nice little um, Euler's method to sort of visualize what it is. It gives you a little bit of restricted information because it gives you an approximation of the x component and the y component and you sort of have to figure out what that looks like in your head. Okay, so that's um, Euler's method. and. Um, Georgia Bar.